Hello, welcome to another edition of Journalist Hangout. I am Dakbo. I will enjoy it. Today on the Hangout, a Nigeria Army sets December deadline to crush Boko Haram as it acquires uh, fighter jets and other weapons. And the Boeing State uh, to pay civil servants 13th month a salary. I'll be joined by Babajide Koladi Otitoju, Tabia Prince Will, and Wahid Bakar. Journalist Hangout starts now. It seems that insurgency in the northeast is about to be quelled, and Nigeria is beginning to skip the hurdles of limiting it from buying weapons and to fight terrorism. On Monday, the federal government took delivery of four training fighter jets from Pakistan, and report says 21 of them will be delivered by the first quarter of 2017. This is good news indeed for a country that had been let down by some of its Western allies several times. Last weekend, uh, the Chief of Army Staff, General Tuko Buratai, uh, gave a marching order uh, to troops to end insurgency in Nigeria before the year runs out. But as we celebrate what some critics call victory over Western hypocrisy, how do we ensure that Boko Haram will no longer loot our arsenal and how realistic is ending his own jersey by 2017. Uh, let me start with the ladies and ladies first. Tabia, uh, good to have you join us uh, again and good to have you join us, gentlemen, also. Uh, Tabia, let me ask you uh, the last question that came up in that uh, uh, sentence. How, how, how is it realistic to end the insurgency by 2017? Well, uh, the, these weapons that are fighter jets that are coming in, it's definitely a, a, good, a good development, you know. But uh, with uh, barely what, how many weeks left to 2017, I don't know. You know, we're, we're fond of these uh, pronouncements. So we say, okay, things will happen before this or that date. Mm. But uh, it seems more like the kind of headline that you release to please people than what is actually, you know, realizable. Because what can be achieved in a matter of weeks that hasn't been achieved, you know, in, in, in months. So, well, I don't know, you know, I, I don't want to sound pessimistic. But, uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll just have to see. Okay, we'll just wait mm. and see. And uh, how, how, how visible is that? Uh, okay. Well, uh, like she rightly said, you know, and uh, we have said the times with that number on this program that uh, it will be cynical and uh, unfair on the part of anybody to say that the Nigerian army have not really you know, dealt a serious blow to the Boko Haram in recent time. But even at that, it's discovered that occasionally Boko Haram spring surprises. We have seen the situation whereby uh, they killed the uh, commander twice. Mm. Mm. They've also ambushed uh, some soldiers. About 40 of them were declared missing the other time. I, I think the problem is that the Nigerian army keep keeping, uh, they keep making the same kind of mistake, thinking that this is uh, a normal, you know, conventional war, whereas it is not. The uh, Pakistan <coughs> that we are running to, you know, to, to get arms and uh, ammunition, fighter jets, fighter precisely, jets. you know. I remember that uh, in April this year, their second in command uh, with the name Mohammed Arain told Reuters, you know, that uh, they have dealt serious blow to militants, you know, uh, terrorist groups that are, you know, causing havoc in that country. But it did not foresee a situation whereby that war will end soon. Hmm. You know, anything can happen. This is not a normal war. You know, because terrorist organizations, they have a global network. As you are killing some, some will also, you know, will, will come up. I think it is better for them to factor in that, uh, that in their plan. The idea of saying that it will end in December, you know, you, you just put unnecessary pressure on yourself. and criticism mm. on yourself. Because mm. we will now remind you that there was a time you did promise that this war will end in December. And we are, we are in December already. How many weeks before December will run out? Is there any sign that we are going to end the war soon? And they just concentrate mm. and be fighting the war. And most know. of these fighter jets are going to be uh, received by Nigeria in the first quarter of 2017. So I wonder maybe it's the four that we have now we're going to win the war with. Ajima uh, you, were, you, you, you traveled down to uh, the northeastern uh, part of Nigeria recent. With the, with the situation on ground, do you think this war uh, will end this year? No. No. And um, I, when... Our president traveled abroad to say there was no Nigerian community under Boko Haram control. I came on this program. 
and I said that wasn't true. And I listed three local governments where Boko Haram continues to run rampant. Hmm. I'm happy that on this program, I talked about Malam Fatori hmm. as one of the towns where Boko Haram continues to give us problems. Two days after I spoke about Malam Fatori, they attacked a Nigerian army um, formation in Malam Fatori, chased our soldiers away. Hmm. And we fought them for days before we could retake Malam Fatori. They went back after suffering that um, setback. They went back and killed Lieutenant Colonel Abu Ali right there in Malam Fatori. You see, this is an army that declared victory. The Chief of Army Staff yes. declared victory some months back. Months if back. you remember, yes. he declared victory. Yes. I don't know why. Burate is doing this. Honestly, I can't explain. He has done a fantastic job mm. of getting our soldiers to take this battle seriously. Because even some of the soldiers who have uh, who, who refused to go into the bush to fight since Burate took over, because he has led from the front, so he's, he's been able to get them to take the war seriously. The way our soldiers used to run from battle after Burate took over, things changed. They tried it in October 2015 in Gaydam. Boko Haram stormed Gaydam, our soldiers ran away. Burate warned that if it should happen again, that they are going to be dealt with severely because they had the weapons to defeat the enemy. So do not believe anyone who says we do not have weapons. We have, Boko Haram does not have weapons as much as the Nigerian army. Mm. To say that Boko Haram has we more weapons than the Nigerian army is the height of ignorance. Because the best weapons that they have were taken from our soldiers. Every time they storm a Nigerian army outpost and they succeed in chasing soldiers away, they loot your weapons. Mm. It happened in Baga, even yeah. weapons that we had not used yes. at all. Yes. They took them away. And even Giwa. Now, we are talking about Giwa Barracks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what we are saying is the way things are now, the chief of army staff wants to end this war desperately. I suspect that there is political pressure on him. Hmm. He is an army officer. He knows that that war can't be won within the month of December. In fact, the army just, the same army that consistently tells us that there is no community in the hands of Boko Haram, the army issued an instruction that people living in Monguno, Monguno is along the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the Lake Chad, yeah. People living in Monguno, people living in Mate, even Abadam, all those communities where Boko Haram still has significant presence, that they should leave because they are preparing for a major operation. Mm. That in itself is an admittance of the fact that those boys are there and you don't want to kill civilians while you fight them. So they are telling the civilians to leave. That is one. The army chief has said, okay, this, the, <coughs> uh, the Boko Haram, we are going to Sambisa Forest to fight them. Mm -hmm. This is the best time. You remember some time ago I said, this is the best time if you want to fight them in Sambisa Forest. This is the best time because if you allow the rains to set in, you will not achieve anything. Your heavy equipment, the mine sweepers, mm. once you take them to Sambisa mm. Forest, when, it's, when it has already begun mm. raining, mm. they will be stuck. Mm. You, see, you even see videos of every uh, equipment of Nigeria I mean stock, stock inside Sambisa Forest, which will make the enemy happy. But right now, Sambisa is dry. At least I went to, uh, within fringes of Sambisa Forest mm -hmm. uh, two days ago. Sambisa is dry now. You can actually Penetrate. do some real tank warfare inside Sambisa Forest and destroy the enemy. I'm confident that ultimately we will defeat this enemy. I, I, I mean, I'm confident in the ability of the Nigerian forces, mm. the Nigerian army, and the Air Force that is providing significant support. But I do not believe that we can win this war as soon as the people uh, in the army are saying it. we can't win this war within the month of December. It will take a while. Okay. Okay. Uh, le le let me go to you now, Tabia, because I'll come back to you because we need to get uh, details of what, uh, what you saw around Sambisa, uh, not the forest itself, really. <laughs> Let me go to you, Tabia. So what do you think? Because where is the element of surprise in all this? Because I, I, saw, I saw the headline the other day 
They said we are entering Sambisa now. I don't know why. Uh, they because do that. I was wondering, even Boko Haram, they might not like Western education, but they, they might be able to read papers. If you get what of I mean. Course. Of course. They yes, can. they should be able. So why are we doing this? And now you're saying we're going to end the war by December. Win the war first. Yeah. What do you think? I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer these questions. That'll be right after this short break. Uh, do stay with us, please. Welcome back. You're still watching Journalist Hangout. And before we went to break, I posted a question to Tabia Princewell. And let me repeat the question. What happened to the element of surprise? Because every time you hear the Nigerians say, we're entering the Sambisa forest now, we're going to win the war in some few days. Why don't you just win the war and tell us we won the war? You know, we have a very curious way of um, doing things in Nigeria. Um, and this is across board, you know, all governments, agencies, ministries, whatever you want it. Um, where we, we really love, we love what you call sound bites, saying things that will get the public, you know, excited mm. or on your side or whatever, as opposed to the reality of it, you know. It's, um, like you said, uh, you don't hear uh, military commanders fighting ISIS, you know, in uh, the Middle East telling you we are about to attack yes. whatever. Mm. It just happens, it happens, you know. So, I don't know, I think, you know, with all of these things, <laughs> there's... Um, there's a strategy that is just different and is just missing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, you communicate when you shouldn't and you don't communicate when, when you, you should. should. You know, those are some of the issues. And again, it's not even just, in, it's, it's everywhere, across board in governments, which is also why people don't really trust a lot of our institutions. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, we talk about cowardice in the army. Yes. It's no surprise. Because first of all, you know, what is it that makes, if you ask yourself, what is it that makes an American soldier, for example, give his life? He runs into battle in Aleppo, in Syria, to protect people that he has never seen before, before. in his life, that he will never see mm. again. That kind of courage, it doesn't come just out of thin air. It's because of the way they're educated, the way they are trained, the things that he knows. The that, orientation. Okay, the orientation that even if, okay, even if I die in battle, my family back home is taken care of. You know, soldiers in America, to even encourage them, they go on campuses, for example, and they get graduates, not just anyone off the street. They get graduates and tell them, okay, if you join the army and you serve for, let's say, I don't know, three years, mm. four years, mm. we'll pay for your education, we'll guarantee you a job at the end of your, your, your term that you've served and all that. All sorts of mechanisms that make people want to give the best out of themselves. Mm. We simply don't have anything like that here. So it's easy to say, it's easy to call someone a coward, but what are you really li risking your life for? for? Who is risking their own life mm. for you or for your family, you know? So, you know, so many things need to change. I mean, we're even talking about ending insurgency before 2017, but the issues on ground that even enabled insurgency in the first place are still not being dealt with. So we can end this one like for a couple issue? of months. What do you think? Poverty. Mm. You know, poverty, the general fact that, you know, I've said before on this program that a lot of states in Nigeria really don't have any control over, over their Resources, territories. Yeah. You know, people are walking in and out of borders like, uh, you know, as if you and I are going from Ikoi to VI to Leki mm. to Ibeju. Leki, mm. it's as if, you know, it's all just one landmass. Mm -hmm. You can't even know who exactly is who, who is doing what. And then when you have situations where governments don't provide for the people, yes. the people seek alternative uh, means of providing for themselves. It can be crime and it can be other people telling you, okay, if you join my organization, I'll give this to you. I'll take care of your family. So when the state isn't present, you find situations like it happens all over the world except mm. that they learn from their mistakes and they now take action to make sure it doesn't repeat itself so as for ending insurgency in 2017 we can end it you know maybe whenever it happens but will it happen again can, 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 can again? one really end insurgency this is not the conventional war can one really win no, you ca you a can. war against ideology you can because the ideology itself is as a result of the failings of government so that means uh, all those uh, uh, things has to be corrected before all those you things win have the to ideology. be corrected because these problems don't come out some of these issues have been brewing if you go Long back time. to the 70s and 80s yes. all those might have seen yes. and all, uh, yes. they are offshoots yes. of what we are what seeing now things don't just appear but you know we ignore if you even look at what is happening in uh, kaduna now mm. with um, uh, what do they call uh, yeah, yeah, the the all of these things, how you treat a situation today, Matters. it's not today that you'll see mm. the results. Mm. It's a year later, five years later, ten years later, and mm. we're still making the same mistakes, unfortunately. Okay. Because you mentioned uh, 
Uh, okay, let's talk about the weapons we should be getting or the ones you've gotten already. And uh, Pakistan now is coming to our aid. Now, we may, we may recall that we, we've tried a couple of times to get weapons from America, a weapon for some other countries, but the other, America is blocking or has blocked those countries because those weapons were made by them. And now this uh, line says, uh, uh, this one looks like, uh, as we celebrate our first victory over Western hypocrisy, do you want to build on that? You see, America is not selling us or not selling uh, weapons to us because of reasons, reasons genuine to them or known to them. Do you think those reasons now, we've, we've, we've addressed those reasons? Well, I, I, I'm a bit worried in the sense that uh, the kind of uh, weapon or the fighter jets we want to buy from uh, Pakistan, you know, how good are they? I did also lead to ones because I'm aware of the fact that, you know, uh, as a tapery this year, Pakistan, you know, admitted that they don't have the, the modern equipment. We we're going to get Chinook helicopters before, man. I was saying uh, we, we have to get four super Moshak aircraft to set to be modernized for modern warfare. That's what this one is. We have had a similar thing in the past. Under Jonathan, it was not as if we didn't buy some of these uh, uh, equipment mm -hmm. that, that we needed, you know. We had a, a situation whereby they bought the four-bish uh, uh, warplane and claimed that they are new ones. Mm. We also what happened, you know, a situation whereby they they, they inflated the, the, the prices of some of these uh, equipment. Even at that, they were not able to serve the <coughs> needed purpose. So what, what I'm saying in the sense is that as at April this year, you know, uh, Pakistan, you know, admitted that they don't have the necessary, you know, equipment which we to to fight uh, terrorism, and they have to rely on uh, what what they call a U.S.-made Lockheed Martin F-16. You know, this are uh, a type of jet fighter that can easily get the exact position. Okay. You know, you, you know, we have seen a situation whereby if you uh, a fighter fighter jets miss miss their their targets, targets. you know. As a result of which civilians were killed, you know. But these ones, these are what uh, Pakistan is now going for. So I'm a bit worried. But I'm also aware of the fact that you know they, they, they look at their at their at the kind of equipment they have, and they said, now we are going to we want to sell off some, you know, we want to upgrade some. So which one are we really buying from them? Are, are, are we really are, are we sure of uh, of uh, uh, their potency? In terms mm. of fighting this uh, terrorism, mm. because it will it will amount to it, it will amount to it will take us to uh, uh, back up, it will take us back to square one. If at the end of the day they cannot really serve the purpose they are meant to serve, you know. And I keep wondering, what are we still doing with our defense industry corporation, mm. which was established in the in the sixties, you know, to provide uh, arms and ammunition? We started about the same time in Brazil, but you you will be amazed what Brazil is doing with its own. Yeah. To the extent that Brazil is earning foreign uh, foreign exchange, you know, from weapons being made in that corporation, which we also started about the same time. But mm. in our own case, what are we using it for? I think the last time I read, I they, they, they are using they are they are they are using uh, they are furniture. they are making furniture, mm. a complete departure of the purpose. But, but they, do they do bulletproof vests. They do bulletproof vests. Bulletproof mm. vests. <laughs> is that what you are going to use to fight terrorist, terrorists? <laughs> Okay, let me go to Jide. Jide, you see, the mm. war against insurgency over there, because I heard the governor and some other people say, the people, the, 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 okay, I have a caller on the line. Is that Peter from Taraba? Hello, Peter, good Hello. afternoon. Oh, good evening. Uh, good evening. How are you, sir? Fine, uh, thank you. Uh, so I want to contribute to uh, about the discussion. Okay. You see, so, about this, uh, equipment they are buying from Pakistan. Mm. They say we are not comfortable with it because you're not comfortable with already, it. Okay. It's already the, the used one which they want to dispose and get the, the modern one. So although I don't know, but if we don't have any other choice, well, but I, I don't think it will serve us better. Okay. And there's something I know I don't know this, <coughs> but let me air it out. It's just about this uh, lieutenant that was killed in the battle. Mm. It's the, I don't really know whether it's the family that sponsored that, uh, 
that the decision that maybe go wide to Nigeria, I don't know. But if the federal government has sponsored it, it's not okay because they are, it, uh, it died along with the about six other soldiers. And there are other soldiers that have gone through that way. Nobody hears about them. Mm. Although mm. I heard that he's a son of one time military governor. Oh, well All of them are soldiers, they died in battle. And okay. most of them, the soldiers. So all of them should be celebrated, right? All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Peter. You've made your point. Thank you so much. And let me go back to the question I was asking. What is the situation on ground? Because you need to give the people there. The people there needs to win the war, not the army really itself. But do you think the people in Buniyadi, because you visited Buniyadi, you visited that school, and those boys were killed. Do you think the people there are ready to defend themselves against this urgency? Or they are ready even to take over where they were before? Well, it's not a question of defending themselves against mm. insurgency. They don't have the weapons to defend themselves. They are not um, in the past. But the body, but is saying he's going to pull out his soldiers after. Or no, no, it's just <laughs> it's empty gas. Honestly, you cannot. The war has not been won. You can you can say what you like. The war has not been won. We are still our soldiers are still being attacked. We were told that Boko Haram can no longer launch military style attacks. Hmm. But when Boko Haram attacks your military base and you lose more than 40 soldiers in one phase of the battle, you cannot say that they can no longer launch military style attacks. At the time when we were saying they can no longer launch military style attacks, Boko Haram went to Bosu in the in in Niger Republic hmm. and captured it. He took the support of Cameroonian armed forces to uh, get, I mean, the, the, for the Nigerians to reclaim Bosu. So, you can, this is an army, this is an enemy that is capable of doing things that you do not expect. And I'm saying now that with ISIS proclaiming Musab al banawi as the leader of Boko Haram in August, those guys appear to have more weapons now. They are, that faction appears to be stronger now because that is the faction that is attacking our soldiers. Mm. Yes. That is the faction that is attacking us. So they, all those, the, the, the battles in Gashigar, no, not Shekau. It was Shekau that surrendered those uh, Chibok guests to us. Okay. You know? Now, the battle in Gashigar, uh, the Malam Fatori, and all of those places were carried out by the, the by the Al Banawi faction. So it's like they are getting more funding, and maybe they've been provided with some, with some weapons, and that's why they are struggling to hold on to the communities along the the banks uh, of um, of the Lake Chad, Lake Chad, so that they can always receive supplies through um, through the Lake Chad, and they can bring in fighters from Chad and from Niger, all those communities, the, the local governments where Boko Haram is giving us problems mm -hmm. are, are located along the border with Chad and Niger Republic. Yeah, can I interrupt you please? Because we need to go on the shop break. When we come back, you need to tell us your experience uh, when you visit the, in some places in the north, east. Don't go anywhere please. Welcome back. Ajide, let me go to you now. So tell us what you saw in Buniyadi and some other places like that. I went to the Federal Government College, uh, Buniyadi, where 59 uh, male students were slaughtered in their sleep uh, in 2014. I wanted to... This is actually... The this is, this is uh, uh, Gujuba. I'm standing in front of the road that leads into Sambisa Forest. Behind me is Sambisa Forest. Mm. So the boys come in on bikes, they cross the road. When they are hungry, they attack the villagers, loot mm. food, and then go you back go into back. Uh, Sambisa Forest. You can, this place leads straight into Sambisa Forest from Gujuba, Gujuba town, in your okay. state. But the soldiers are not around here, right? No. No. But they should be. It's not everywhere. You can't put soldiers everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's why we have problems with these insurgents. The size of the Nigerian army, you can't even police the whole of 
Zambisa Forest because Zambisa Forest stretches across seven states, right mm -hmm. up to even Jigawa State. So when people think, oh, it's a small place, oh, yes. so just we just go and overrun the place, you don't know exactly where the they location. are. Mm. It's a problem. The chief of air staff has confessed that the biggest challenge he has is the size of the Sambisa forest. Wow. So when you visited Boniyadi, did you have goose pimples? I was close to tears when I entered the hostel where those boys uh, were see. killed because you see bullet holes on the walls. Their wall. Mm. And then they wrote Taliban on the wall. Mm. Clearly, um, out of excitement that they had achieved their aim of killing innocent boys. And then I was out that in the school, you know the way federal government colleges are, are, are built. You have li laboratories, hostels, so many buildings. And there is not one building in the whole of that school that is standing. Boko Haram made sure that they destroyed every building well, in Where is this? School. Niger House? That's a wall this is them. the wall of the hostel. Okay. You know, it's the wall of the hostel. I eventually, I hope that we'll see some pictures because I got inside. Into, the, I saw you beside the bunks in the. In yes, the they, are the, they are beds. Because mm -hmm. they, now, the school is supposed to be rebuilt, but it's not going to take a massive effort because there's nothing that they didn't destroy. Now, what is happening in the north east is that look the urban centers are safe our soldiers provide enough um, security but people are not convinced that outside of the urban centers that they are safe for example i travel from my duguri to mafa it's a distance of 50 kilometers all the villages in Mafa, we have uh, an army base. All the villages within that 50 meter radius are not occupied by anybody. Mm. You won't find a single soul. And this is the hostel where those boys were okay. killed. Now, the problem that we, if you are driving, to tell you that the insurgency has not ended, the boys know where our soldiers are. They don't want to get killed. So they just wait. They are in the bushes. You go to Goza, they are on the Goza mountains on the other side of it. They are waiting. There. Yes. You go to Pulka, just outside Pulka, do the, where people, that's why people don't farm and there's hunger in the, uh, the northeast. It's true that there's no hunger because you can't go into your farm. Mm -hmm. If you step mm -hmm. out of your community, you move like one kilometer out of your community to go and farm, you'll be killed. Okay. And we have stories where even women were saying that, look, we need more soldiers. If we step out, to say if our husbands go out with us to farm, they get killed, we become widows. Mm. So this is the situation. After Buneyadi, it is advisable for you not to not to travel along that road again. That road leads to Bill, but it is extremely unsafe. And the soldiers know this. You see, the soldiers could, could man checkpoints, just a few checkpoints on the road. Well, they they can't be everywhere. That's the point I'm making. So people who are wise, okay, look at Damboa, for example. So that's why we need more Look at Damboa. Damboa. Mm. The military opened the uh, Maiduguri Damboa Highway. But Boko Haram went back to the road and they were killing people, taking people prisoner. So you know that you don't have to, to, to go on that road. Mm. So that is the thing. And that is, that is, as long as our people don't feel safe, as long as you can't move freely. In my degree today, if you are going to Dikwa or somewhere else to oh, trade, so where, where is this now? police, yes. this is um, Buneyadi um, Motor Park. These are scraps of vehicles that Boko Haram set ablaze. Oh, in, these are vehicles? In the, yes, scraps of vehicles that they set ablaze in the motor park. Right. So, so now, the people, if they know that they cannot move freely, today in Maiduguri, if you want to, you are, you are traders, when they are mo moving from town to town, like they are going to Chibok, they must go under heavy military uh, I mean, uh, protection. Mm. So if people, if we have not gotten to that point that people can move as much as they like from community you to community world, to trade, then how can you say that by the end of December that uh, the well, war will end? Well, I know that politicians are behind this pressure on the army. Because I remember that even the, the governor of uh, uh, Borno State said that the IDPs will be closed. 
how can you close the IDPs when the people have lost their homes? Where do you expect them to, to, to live to, in? To live in a lot of the communities, you will find that no, nobody's even living in them <laughs> because they've lost their homes. Okay, what, what, do, you, what do you think now, Tabia? Because mm -hmm. the IDPs are not uh, pleasant uh, anymore. And even where is it from five pounds to fire now? The, the IDP is down. The camps are not, uh, the, the camps, that's what mm -hmm. I was talking. Mm -hmm. They need to leave the camps. They cannot go home. So where do they go to now? And mm -hmm. do you think this war will be won if the people that were displaced doesn't even find where to even mm -hmm. put their heads? You know, from everything that has just been said right now, it makes my blood boil. Mm. When you now hear some people defending those who are being, uh, what's it, are being uh, investigated or those who are being accused of, of uh, spending crime or the spending the money, you know. Meant for arms, right? Uh, me meant mm. for arms. And that has caused, in fact, this whole situation where mm. people may never, their lives may never quite be the same again because where do you start from? So with the two point something billion dollars or mm -hmm. million dollars, we would have gotten enough mm -hmm. even weapons to even fight this. Is that what you said? Definitely. You know, and then, you know, the thing about it is we need to go even beyond just this whole uh, Dasuki Gates uh, issue. You know, everything that we have been discussing just now is as a direct result of corruption. Mm. Had we been investing in drones like other countries have been doing for how many years now? Even this Sambisa forest issue, the drones would be able to fly above it yes. and detect where exactly, you know, technology yes. in the modern world, the people fighting ISIS and fighting all these other insurgents, why they make progress, why their own situation seems to move forward and ours is just, you know, here today, there tomorrow and we never really know, is because they are using the tools that have been provided. In Nigeria, we don't do that. Yeah, and then you hear people guy. making excuses for this person, that person saying, but oh, it's uh, vindictive. It's because uh, they have bad blood. It's because of this or whatever. And other people have lost their lives, their livelihood. You know, they, 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 they can't live a normal life. And even the IDPs you mentioned now, even in the camps. In fact, if you want to go back to uh, why the USA says they didn't want to uh, so, sell arms yeah. in the first place, it's because of human rights abuses. Yes, we'll talk about that. Can I quickly take Ali from Niger? Good evening, Ali. Yeah, no, hello. Good evening. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Baba Jido, good evening. How are you? Ali, you Namu. Yeah, thank you. You are welcome back from Kwa. Uh, yeah, good evening. Uh -huh. You see, I think Nigerian military, we have to be a little secret in whatever we do. We talk to the press too much. Sometimes when you tell them, when you say you will do something for a period of time, these people, these insurgents, they will take advantage of the period you say. Mm -hmm. They may lie low. When you turn your from no air, then they strike. So I think there must be secrecy within the military. We should talk less and act well. Oh, hmm. we, because the more we tell them it's going to happen so time, so we are going to do take care of it by, by so period. Everybody, these who are not fools, you think maybe they are not educated, but there are some yeah, of them are educated. Say so they will start countering you. So please, I'm appealing to the military. Let them keep most of this into their chest. And the political class will not give them unnecessary pressure. Okay. Thank you so much. Ali. Country. Yeah. I help us. Okay, I'll, I'll let you finish because uh, before we go on a short break, I'll let you finish. We're talking about hu hu human rights. Mm. That's why America did not want to. Uh, uh, mm. Have we yeah, overcome and, that? And they know we haven't. I mean, we still get reports uh, every so often about what uh, women, in particular, in the IDP camps are going through rape and all kinds yes. of abuses and all that. It's not normal. And you know, for countries like the US, who are so big on human dignity and human rights, they can't accept such a situation. They can't tolerate it. Okay. And when journalists hang out returns, a boy in the state government declares Christmas a bonus in the face of biting economic recession. And details after this time. Please stay with us. So welcome back. And let's conclude on this uh, particular subject before we go to the other one. And let me get your conclusion also. Yes, you? uh, I think... Uh, it is high time the Nigerian uh, army will stop uh, giving us uh, fallen hope. Mm -hmm. They are really tried. There is no doubt about it. They, uh, they should avoid a situation whereby they come on here, you see them in the newspaper all the time, you know, telling us their plan of action. Because those people, they are capable of, you know, studying whatever uh, you want to do and find a way of, you know, re repairing the attack that you plan. Mm -hmm. So let, they, should, they should do more work and, and less talk. Less talk. Less talk. You know what I you agree, think? I agree absolutely. Those who go around guys are no fools. And like Aliu said, 
many of them are educated. You need to read a memo written by Musa Balbanawi. Hmm. Flawless English. Flawless English. Everybody is educated. So we shouldn't so take them for granted. Don't, yes, don't underage them. Don't think that they don't know what they are doing. You are planning and they have intelligence. They know the movement of our troops. The last commander that they killed in a place called Bita in Bono State. How did they know that he was traveling? How mm. did they know he was on that route? Mm. And then he stepped on an IDP, uh, on an the, IED. The IED. They were surveying the damage to the vehicle when these boys came out from the bush and killed him. Wonderful. So let's not um, announce a plan of action. We want to do this. Let's do it suddenly. And if we, because surprise attack is, still it's remains very best. effective in military uh, warfare. So, so let's, let's, let's surprise them more. Because they surprise us a lot. Yes. Let's surprise them more and not advertise our actions. The Chief of Army Staff's plan to go and do Christmas with everybody in the, in the Army headquarters mm -hmm. in the Northeast is a good one to motivate the boys. But to set a timeline that the surgency must not extend into 2017 is unrealistic. And if it is the politicians who are piling pressure on the Army, I advise them to stop it because. We are not gain anything from, from this. The, the Bono State Governor also said they will close IDPs in 2017. I've been to Bono State. I've been to um, to Yobe. Mm. It makes no sense for anybody to even be thinking of closing IDPs at this time. Okay. All right then. Because uh, let me start with uh, let me start with you on this uh, particular subject because the Ebony State Government is on the verge of paying 13th month salary, the Christmas package also, yes. and they start to pay 23 years of pension arrears. You know why? Because you become a right activist when you talk about uh, pay, uh, payment of worker salary. Mm. And I know you must be very, very happy. You have so on. I've always <laughs> said that <laughs> governor should be able to pay. Yes. Did you read what uh, uh, Governor Ayade of uh, Cross River said? That. He said that he will never... Ayade, by the way, decided to pay December salary on December 1. That, same, that man, the same governor, paid workers on May 1 so that they can celebrate Workers' Day. So if someone is able to pay on the first day of the month, that should tell you that he doesn't have any problem paying at the end of the month. But we have some governors owing seven months, eight months as we speak. One of the reasons why your, your governor couldn't get his, <laughs> his, his, his own man to su succeed. <laughs> you your oh, are you going to change your state? I'm not. Now, was because... April was the last time that people were paid mm. in an election year. I mean, it's, it's an invitation to easy defeat. But you see the question, Jide, is it, now, if some is it that you cannot pay at all? I'm, you should have see, thought thing, about you know paying. Thing, let's, let's talk about why this governor, why some governors can't pay. Because so it's not like they are refusing. refusing okay. You see, there's a lot of planlessness about the situation that we find ourselves. You take loans for projects that are meaningless to the people. Mm. Projects that will not impact meaningfully on the lives of the people. And then you are forced to pay back. As soon as you take your allocation, they, they deduct they deduct from source. a source. So <laughs> now, how do you now pay? That is because even the man in Bayesa State, that's the problem that he faces. The man who was governor before him, Silva, Silva. Mm. took Silver. hefty loans. He too, the current governor also took some loans. So you must pay back before you think of doing anything with the money. Uh -huh. So that is the problem. Why do we have governors in a, a state where there are five universities, for example, and the governor still went ahead and built another university? Mm -hmm. They are bringing things that people do not need. Airports. And, and they cannot... Airports. On this program, somebody was saying some states are big, this and that. But the question is, how is Anambra, for example, is the biggest state in the southeast? How is Anambra able to pay salaries regularly? Yobe, Yobe, uh, the Yobe governor has not missed one month of salary. And Yobe, he he could have decided to fire. build an airport like others. Yes. And then uh, uh, saddled oncoming generations without uh, with, with, uh, without burden. Hmm. So that is the thing. You should know. We are not saying that all what they take from the federation account should, they go, should to, go straight to uh, salaries. I mean, as, no. That one is even senseless. But a lot of our governors are cowards because political decisions are sometimes difficult to take. Tinobu took it here in Lagos. Mm. When he saw that the suicide was over bloated, he allowed some of them to go. Mm. These ones lack the courage okay. 
to say, okay, no, we can't pay all of these people, let some of them go. None of them is ready for political expediency. Yeah. They will not take that decision. Okay, Sandra, before I go to you, but, but my, my governor, said he was going to pay the salary after Jagede had won. It's a lie. It's a lie. And as a journalist, I don't expect it to be saying that. No, I said my governor it's said It's a lie. Mm. I said, he, he never said so. Mm. I watched a program mm. where a woman said that uh, Jagede uh, Memeko mm. said so. There was no time that I said that. that. I said so. Okay. It's just those rumors that we see on social on media. Social media. Okay. He has lost the election. There's no need for us to mm. rob it in. Mm. He never said so. There was no time that I made that promise. Okay. Let me go to you, Tabia. And uh, hopefully, I, I believe Melaye said this because Melaye mm. is arguing that a whole lot of money, Dino Melaye, mm. uh, the same Melaye. 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 I don't Melaye. own the word. I don't own the word. Yes. Yes. Melaye. Like Melaye. 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 Is it not Yoruba? Okay. Mm. He's it's saying from that my local government. 36 states received over $4 billion. Uh, that's uh, being the deductions from Paris and uh, the Paris and the but London they've denied problems. It. And they've denied, they've denied it. it. They've denied also. it. Also, a denied lot of money it. there. That's, provide proof and they that denied it. Look, yes. You know, currently there's no proof that that did happen. But let's entertain the idea that it did happen. The the sad thing about it is, um, one can believe it did, because the practice in Nigeria has been that even when the states do have money, they don't take, as was said previously, the right decisions. You know. When you look at how other countries manage their affairs, Nigeria or Africa, these are the only places where you find states that exist only to have, it seems, civil servants. You know, there's no business going on except employing mm -hmm. people. We take all of these short-term decisions for quick gains, quick political gains, without thinking about the long-term benefits. You know, a lot of the governors are not creative, unfortunately. They're not looking at ways to bring investment or bring business into their states or to turn their citizens into people that can make money outside of uh, government revenue. Because how do other countries survive? You don't need to know the governor of Alabama or Kansas or wherever to be able to live your life and, and make money. All those uh, states I named in, in, named in the U.S., people are free to go into business because they have power, they have roads, they, they have all sorts of things where, of you know, if you want to go into business, you don't need to look at, you, half of them don't even know who, what's their business or who their governor or what his name is or what he does. So, so you buy the idea that one of the governors said of mm -hmm. research, some of the governors said, mm -hmm. okay, the workers, mm -hmm. they should go on part-time. It's farming, not, no, farming, it's not, I, I, don't, I don't believe in that because <laughs> what we do then is impoverish people. You, <coughs> you took the decision to employ them. That's you now your responsibility to do the right thing by them. Either you fire them, there's the no part time. Yes. Either, either you fire them or you keep them. You're keeping them, you do right by them. There's a stipulated amount to pay them, you pay them that amount. If you can't pay that amount, like in any business, you say, I'm sorry, but for X reason, resign. resign. Or, you know, we, we can't or afford we to contract. keep you. Mm. You know, it's all these, uh, all these uh, neither here nor there solutions that we take that cause problems in, in for us in the future. The governors just need to get creative. Each state needs to figure out what do I have in my state that can be seen as an advantage that people can come and invest in and buy into? You know, you see all uh, a lot of the Asian countries that had these same issues in the 80s and 90s. There were mass retrenchments. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't fair. It wasn't nice, but it had to be done. But what they did is that they gave those people something else to do. They figured out, okay, this is a state, for example, that has I don't know a lot of palms, for example. Maybe this state should go into exporting this or that. And those people were now used to give an opportunity to go into that business. So we need to just get creative and stop, uh, you know, playing with people's lives. What is part-time in waste, this economy? The waste is even huge. Part-time in this economy. Good evening. Yeah. You're calling from Chicago. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, how do I say it? Exactly. Oh, good morning. Good, 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 good morning. Okay. Um, I am really happy to get through. Uh, for the last few years now, I would like to ask your final and your program is very educative and okay. very motivative mm -hmm. at the same time. Thank you so Thank much. You so much uh, Mr. Gide. I really love and enjoy you, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you. Um, number one, oh, on, you'll uh, see me when I come to the U.S. He's going to be in Chicago soon. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I am looking forward to meet with you, okay? okay. Um, um, number one, on terrorism, I want to say thank you, Tyba, or Tyber, I'm proud of your name, right? Um, the problem of terrorism, is poverty, okay? There's no way any, even though you were, I've been here for a long time, there's no way you can win ideological war, okay? So poverty is the most important thing that we need to eradicate in Nigeria. And over two on the paying the workers in Nigeria, I think most of the governors in Nigeria, they should be put to them for all any labor 
they pay. Mm. They work for it and they have to pay them for what they are doing. Or the, why are they getting paid? The, oh, the employee are not getting paid. Mm. You know? So number two. Um, so number three is whatever we're saying. They have to generate or create a revenue or business plan environment mm. for business people or for investors to help that country. All right. Everybody has told like I have to let you go now because we have limited time on the program. So we'll leave space for others to call in. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your call. And let me go to you, Wahid. And what do you think? A good news, a boy, uh, paying even 13th month. Uh, even Lagos is doing good also. We've got more of those states. I think Lagos too should yes. pay 13th month. The Lagos should pay. Uh, last Christmas was a very bleak one for most uh, families, you know, in Nigeria. And, uh, okay, like a tweet said, Lagos should be able to pay 14th. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so this, this year's one will be worse in the sense that, you know, virtually everything, uh, uh, the prices of everything, you know, it's has gone up, you know, by 200%, 300%, even 500% in some cases. So how do you expect people to cope in that kind of situation? And people, it's a that, good thing. people that, that doesn't have money. Well, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good thing that, uh, Bonny, you know, uh, has come out to... to Apart from the fact that they are going to pay 13 months, I think the salary, the December salary, have been paid as yes, at yes. December first. Mm. You know, and you keep wondering what is the magic behind this kind of thing. You know, why is it difficult for other governors you know, to, 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 to do mm. to do similar With things? That population big as to, to, is to do Forty-four things. local governments, they are not winning. You know, and it all goes down to the fact that most of our governors, they, 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 they cannot put on their think, uh, thinking cap at the right time. And they are fond of you having must have place. The cap. You must have the cap to put it on. You and know, like, I don't have the cap. That's why I don't wear and cap. And they are fond of, you know, going about with this misplaced priority of the team. You know, airports, where you don't need airports. To the life of people mm. is what they are concentrating on. And mm. they have reason for doing that. Because they know that that is where they are going to get their own personal money. Yeah, you know, they are going to inflate contracts, they do all, 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 all manner of things. Look at uh, in Anambra, for instance, or every every civil servant in Anambra is so is is sure that you know letters by on the 26th of every month they get their salary. Mm. How is the how is the man doing it? Mm. Why can't that's others? after he increased their salary? Yes, at, at the May rally in 2015, he did promise that once I once the IGR can improve from 500 million naira to 1 billion naira, you are going to get increment. Mm. And he fulfilled the promise. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, as we round up, apart, apart from cutting down their waste, uh, what else should they do ASAP to even <coughs> get them out of this quadrangle? The, the avenues through which the resources are leaking are too many. Mm -hmm. If we can block some of those avenues, and a lot of them, some of their own people, their own political appointees are guilty. So we can block some of these avenues through which the resources are leaking. We'll be able to find enough money. The Quran says <laughs> that the laborer is entitled to his wages mm. before the, the sweat dries on his body. Mm. So if we call ourselves good Muslims, good Christians, we should do what the scriptures say. It's also in the there's no, there's no, no reason why. No, I, de I deliberately chose the, the Quran because, the Quran says. because no. of <laughs> so that people will know that it yes. is not. Uh, it's, a it's a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's why he could summon mm -hmm. that quote. But it's there in the Quran. But now even the sweat have dried. They've washed the sweat. Over dried. Self. Over dried. Self. It's so unfortunate. A message for the governors that have refused. No, you said I should not use refused. <laughs> Or have, uh, it's, it's refused. refused. It's lack of political Better. will. There's no mm -hmm. other word. Lack of mm -hmm. political will. You know, if I, it's not even the governors that we should, the message should be directed at. It's the people that vote them in and the people that accept to be treated this way. Other African countries, take Senegal for example. Look, try and refuse to pay a Senegalese civil servant his salary for even South one Africa, month, not even, not even to one month. South See Africa, what will happen. Mm -hmm. The whole country goes to a halt. Because they don't take things like that from their leaders. Maybe that's what, what happened in Ondo also, because the people came out in a large number. Yeah, and said maybe, maybe the votes, that, no, yeah, the maybe votes will have been worse than that. Well, we lost than that. The people actually spoke. <laughs> okay. What do you think, uh, Wahid, as we go? Well, they, 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 they should try to, to give to put a smile on the face of people. This new try period, you know, is this is the season to give. So mm. let's make our workers to be happy. After all, well, what they are them, giving give them, it does not even belong to them. Give them, them their salary mm. so that they can enjoy the, 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 the festive so period. Much. Thank you so much, Wahid Bakara. Don't let this sweat. Atabia Prince, thank you also.
And that's all on Journalist Hangout today. I join us tomorrow for another interesting episode of the program. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on YouTube at youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at TVC News.tv. I am Dakmo. I will Bye for now. God bless Nigeria.